Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over um, working with resumes in Microsoft Word. And I'm thinking back, you know, when I got out of college, let's see, I graduated in 95, and you know, I was making resumes and left, left and right like everybody else does. But I didn't know about resumes in Word. I didn't know about tables, I didn't know about tabs, I didn't know about line breaks, I didn't know about managing indents and all that kind of stuff. And it was one of those situations where you meet someone and say, oh yeah, I'll get you my resume uh, tomorrow morning by 9 a.m., you know, fax it right over. Yeah, we used fax then and didn't know all that stuff so it was a lot of stress a lot of time a lot of hours you know just really messing around with getting this resume right but if you know some basics in word it's a lot easier so before I even open up one of the templates one of the resume templates there in word I just want to run down a couple quick skills here so I've got a blank document and let's see the first thing I want to do I'm gonna look at indentations here so I'm just gonna go ahead and type in some quick random text random two comma five there we go. That'll give me two paragraphs with five sentences each. Now, if you select a paragraph, and by selecting a paragraph, you can just click your insertion point anywhere in that paragraph. Just put your cursor anywhere in that paragraph, and you can control the indentation markers. There's three indent markers. There's a top line indent, first line indent, I'm sorry, first line indent, hanging indent, and then the left indent. And over here on the right side of the ruler is the right indent. So if I were just to drag in that first line indent it just indents the first line pretty normal I'll go ahead and slide that back if I drag in the hanging indent it drags in every line except the first line put that one back and if I drag the left indent that moves the whole thing over and if I move the right indent in there you go And this is how you might indent a block quote if you were doing a more formal research paper or something like that so that's how you might do a block quote okay let me go ahead and drag those indent markers back there we go, that's pretty easy to deal with. Now, if obviously if I want to affect multiple paragraphs, then I select multiple paragraphs. Oh, let me do it this way. I'll do a click, 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 hold on the third click, drag down, I've got my two paragraphs, and I could indent both equally that way. So you can control indentations at the beginning or the end. All right, let's try something else here. What if, instead of these paragraphs, what if I have a bulleted list? So, item one, item two, item three. Notice when I'm doing a bulleted list, there are still indent markers. And the first line indent controls the placement of the bullets. The hanging indent controls the placement of the text after the bullet. Okay. Now this comes in really handy on a resume. Because if I have more text, this is more text, there we go. And let's say I've got so much text that I want to go down to another line. Bear with me here, this is some fake text we can see where the hanging indent lines up the text after the bullet. So this means if I were to move my first, in fact, since I have multiple paragraphs, I'll select them. If I move my first line indent, I can control how far away the bullets are from the actual text. Okay, let me control Z, undo that. Now something else that's gonna come up a lot in your resume is what happens when you wanna go to the next line? And this happened to me back in, uh, 95 when I was working on my resume. I wanted to have more information on the next line. So not knowing about line breaks, I would press my enter key, but I don't want another bullet. So then I turn off the bulleting and I say, okay, well that's over there. So I've got to line these up. There we go, but that didn't look quite right either. So then I had to mess with a bunch of line space. Well, let me show you an even better way. Let's say you've got a bulleted item and you want to go down to the next line. All you got to do is press Shift Enter. Okay, Shift Enter is a line break. Control Enter is a page break. So if I do a Shift Enter right here, there we go. So now I've got a, a second line and it makes it just so much easier. Just go to the end of a bulleted text, Shift Enter, more text for that bullet. Okay, so indentations you need to know about. You also need to know about line breaks. Okay, and you can manipulate indentations and use line breaks wherever you need to. Okay, let's try something else here. I also want to talk about tabs. This is also pretty critical on resumes. So, by default, if you just press your tab key, your insertion point is going to move about every half inch or so. Okay, so those are tabs. But I want to put in some custom tabs. Now I don't need a custom tab here, so over here on the left side of the ruler, this is your tab marker. By default, it's at a left tab. And basically, you choose the kind of tab you want, and you click on the ruler where you want that tab. Uh, let's see, I've got six and a half inches of space to work with. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna create a center tab. So I'm gonna click my tab marker, and I'm gonna choose a center tab. Looks like a little upside down T. 
and I'm going to go ahead and click right around the three and the quarter. I'm just going to click once with my mouse, and I'm going to insert a center tab at the three and a quarter inch mark. So I'm going to have left align text, which is the default. Now, if I press my tab, instead of going a half inch, it's going to jump all the way to that three and a quarter inch mark there in the center of my page, and this is going to be centered text. I'm going to go to my tab marker and choose a right align tab. It's like a little backward left align tab, right tab. Now, I want to put this right tab right at the six and a half inch mark, but here's the trick to that. Um, instead of clicking right there on the six and a half, which makes it tough to do, I'm going to click here, just right up around the six. I'm going to click and drag that right tab to the six and a half inch mark. So it's really tough to see. You might just have to trust me on this, but there is a right tab marker right there on top of my right indent. So on this paragraph where I'm at, if I press tab, it's going to jump over to the six and a half inch mark, and this will be right align text. So this is where you might do something like, um, you know, your job title, tab, um, maybe the business you worked for, tab, and then you might put in the you know, the years you worked for it. So everything is lined up all nice and neat using tabs. And that's what tabs are for, to line things up nice and neat. Okay, one more thing. Let's go ahead and insert table. And I'll just insert a two row, three column table. So now I've got a table. And you can kind of think of each cell in a table as a separate little document. And you can work with them in those ways. You can even put tabs inside of table cells and things like that, but it's a little bit different. By the way, each, each cell, notice this, has its own indentation markers. So you can control the first line, hanging, and left and right indents for each table cell. Same concept as before. But if I have a tab in here, let's see, I'm going to go to this particular cell, and I will put a uh, left align tab right there and then I'll put a center tab right there. So now I have tabs inside of this table cell. Notice they're not in my second table cell, and they're not down here. They're just in this one table cell, this top left table cell. Now if I press my tab key in a table, what that does is it moves from one cell to another. So if I'm in a table cell and I want to jump to the next tab in that table cell, I have to press control tab. Okay, So control tab in a table cell will jump to the tabs just regular tab by itself in a normal document will jump to the tabs. So just keep in mind that little weirdness, okay? So now that you've got all that down, let's check this out. I'm going to go to File and uh, and New. And let's see, I want to look for one of their templates here. I'll just scroll on down, scroll on down. Here we go, res uh, Resumes and CVs or Curriculum Vitae's. And oh, Basic Resume, that's cool. And I'll just choose this default one here, chronological. I bet a lot of people have probably looked at this one before anyway. So here we go. So here's the resume in Word. Let me go ahead and minimize my uh, ribbon for a, for a minute so you can see a little bit more. So this is a typical resume template in Microsoft Word. And you might be tempted just to go ahead and fill it out. And I'd encourage you to do that. You know, make your resume using one of these professionally accepted templates. But if you want to make any slight modifications to this, it gets tricky unless, of course, you know about indentations, tabs, um, line breaks, and tables. You want to know about all those things because even though it's hard to tell right now, a table is being used to manage all of this. Let me show you this. If you kind of move your mouse over a resume in Word and you see this little four-way arrow pop up, that's a table selection marker. So I can click on this and I've selected the entire table. Now I can go to my home ribbon and I can go to my borders button and I can choose all borders. And now I can see all of the borders for that table. This is really going to shed a lot of light on a situation because now if you wanted to, for instance, create another category, you might not just press your enter key. You would actually probably right click over here to the left of a table cell and then you would choose insert and then I would probably insert row above or insert row below. That way you can maintain the same kind of formatting. So you need to know that many of the resume templates in Word rely on a table behind the scenes. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. Okay, now that you know about that, you can work with it in ways you've seen in the past. So here's a particular table. Oh, here, let me, let me jump over to this one. So notice I'm on this particular table cell. It's asking for dates of employment. And I can see, all right, there's the indent markers there. Nothing terribly unusual. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think I see a, a tab marker over there. Um, 
here we go this one makes a little bit more sense if I jump over here to the center cell you can see that there is a left tab marker right there at the um, it's like the three and the eighth mark so basically if I were to type some text here now that actually looks like it's centered so the tab marker isn't really affecting it too much um, what they probably have is they you can also control the formatting of a particular cell so they've got centered text on the cell so sure enough if I go to table tools layout and I can see there it is centered text so then I might wonder well what is this tab marker doing it could not be it may not be doing anything and since I didn't show you before if you want to get rid of a tab a special custom tab all you have to do is go to the ruler click and drag it down off the ruler and it's gone away there we go and they've got some bulleted lists on here sure enough put in your text if you want to put in another line but without a new bullet shift enter okay that's pretty good yeah so knowing about tables that's gonna really make your life a lot easier when you're working with these resumes 